In continuation of our all-time Overwatch League retrospective, today I'm going to revisit a video I made almost a year ago where I kind of gave you what in my opinion was like a rough generalization of the Overwatch League's all-time franchise rankings. I did that more in a tier list, but today I'm going to do it more so in an actual numbered video, 1 through 20. Not gonna lie, a lot kind of goes into this, and I'll probably change my mind as time goes on with some of these numberings, but basically a lot of it has to do with how much you were able to succeed in the league. Did you win a lot of games? Did you win any tournaments or championships? Were you consistent? A lot of that stuff matters greatly, as for a bunch of people, winning is everything. But it's not gonna be everything. If you want me to do a separate video based off of who has won the most, that is something I can do, but there's a lot more that goes into it such as franchise stability did you have any disastrous seasons was there drama surrounding you mismanagement all of that plays a factor into this it doesn't just have to do with how much you win or lost what kind of experience did you give your fans in general i think that is very important as we get into this, do keep in mind that some of the stuff may end up sounding a lot better in my head than it does in actual video format for other people to listen to. A lot of my reasoning may actually be flawed in your eyes, and if you do disagree and you'd want to change something, let me know what you'd change down in the comments below. I feel like most people will generally understand where I'm going with this though, so just bear with me and hear me out. So, starting off at number 20 in my all-time Overwatch League franchise rankings is the Toronto Defiant. Toronto may not have any of those catastrophic franchise explosions like a bunch of other teams out there, but I'd argue what they made their fans go through is even worse for a couple of reasons. For one, they've essentially been a stagnant franchise for six years, which is the absolute worst thing for a fan to experience. If you're a sports fan, you know what I mean. But also, Toronto failed to keep any main roster for more than a single season. With every passing year, very few remnants of the previous iteration stuck around. Despite always making these changes in desperation to improve though, their best performance in a single season was 9-7. And they have exactly zero postseason victories in their history, and the lowest prize winnings of all 20 franchises. You need to keep in mind their biggest claim to fame is finishing a regular season tournament in the top three. That's the best they have to offer after all the time, money, and changes they've made. Defiant have been fairly dysfunctional in their own right as a result, even if ownership has stayed relatively stable. I think Defiant fans have arguably had the worst experience, as I don't know if there's anything worse in the entire world than waiting for your moment to come, literally just for you to suffer year after year in the same result. I think most sports fans would agree with me when I say that it is absolutely brutal to feel stuck like this, never good enough to make any noise, but never bad enough to get rid of that false hope. It feels like all the other franchises had at least some kind of peak. With Defiant, it never came. And for that, I believe a great argument can be made for them as the worst franchise ever. Moving on to the number 19 slot, I'm going with the Washington Justice. The Justice have had it pretty rough in their lifetime. Things just never went according to plan with this team literally right from the start. Honestly, most years for the Justice have been pretty depressing for one reason or another. Ineptitude to build steady rosters in the early years, underperforming once they got their act together, and ownership forcing the team to trade away key players and build a budget roster at the very end. There's always been some kind of roadblock with them. They are tied, right now, for the worst regular season winning percentage of all time at a measly 33%. And much like Toronto, their best year ever is 9-7, and, and they pretty much have no tournament success to speak of. However, the thing that gives them the edge, at least in my opinion, is the Season 3 NA playoffs. Nearly pulling off that miracle run and getting third place is more success than Toronto has literally ever found in the postseason. It may not be much, but at least the Justice can say that at one point, they were one of the best teams in the world. 
but that's basically all we can give them, especially because if it weren't for COVID, that run never would have happened in the first place. They're a pretty lucky team. The Justice were absolutely terrible at building rosters, and they've consistently posted some of the worst results in the league. Justice fans have experienced such little joy, and for that, I think they're definitely bottom two. Speaking of little joy, at number 18 is the Vegas Eternal. Honestly, it's kind of a shame that Vegas ended up becoming arguably the worst ran org in league history, because the start of their journey really wasn't too bad. They were one of the best teams back in 2020. They won the Summer Showdown in an epic fashion, with one of the young rosters built for the future, but unfortunately, 2020 is their only true claim to fame. That's essentially the only positive for a franchise surrounded by turmoil. Every season besides 2020 was a disaster somehow. Season 4 itself was fine results-wise, but the budget issues going into that season leading to the deconstruction of the Element Mystic Core was pretty disappointing. And what else really is there aside from that? How about a failed EU roster at the start? Or what about two of the worst seasons of all time in back-to-back -back seasons? How about zero playoff wins in five years, and being tied for last in all-time win percentage? How about constant roster changes? How about treating your players the last two seasons like dog water? How about management choosing to do things for their own benefit without thinking about what's best for the team while simultaneously attacking potential careers in the making for some of their former players? Vegas were so poorly ran, it's not even funny. They are very, very lucky that Season 3 happened. It is the only leverage that they have in this scenario, and even then, they still might just be the worst franchise anyway. At number 17, I'm going with the Valiant. As a former fan of this team, it pains me to be putting them this low, but we gotta face the music. Immortals turned the Valiant into a clown fiesta. What has this Valiant team done in the last three years? What, two of the worst seasons of all time? Or how about the fact that they haven't even won 10 games in the last three years combined? And that only scratches the surface, right? They lied to everyone. They betrayed their players because they couldn't be bothered to stay an owl after 2020. They let Chinese management make crap rosters while giving them borderline unbearable living conditions. And then there's this year, where they gave the team literally no support whatsoever on a minimal budget and didn't even remember the password to their goddamn Twitter account. They are such an embarrassment to the league, and the only reason they're not lower is because they were actually respectable up until the end of 2020. They had some minor controversies here and there, but they maintain relevance with a loyal fan base. they won a stage title as well, and they made the playoffs a couple times while pulling off some pretty big upsets throughout the years, and the fact that they had a top 8 winning percentage after the first 3 years is pretty good. But there's just no way this is going to repent for the sins that we've seen the last few seasons. I don't care how much they've won in the past. This org is garbage. Number 16, the Boston Uprising. Boston are a strange team to judge. Like, they've had two years in each boat. Two really bad ones, two mediocre ones, and two pretty good ones. Balanced as all things should be, I suppose. The issue with Boston that has me putting them low is their highs just aren't anything to write home about. A 10-0 stage 3 and top 4 in this year's playoffs where they just had to beat London twice to make it happen is cool, but that's basically as good as it gets. That's the best they came up with in 6 seasons. There's plenty of orgs that are arguably more scummier, but Boston accomplished so little and they've been here literally since the start. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that for most of their lifetime, Huck was in charge. I know I'm not the only one to think this, but he was kind of a shady dude, and he didn't get along with everybody that well, and he refused to spend money on big rosters for the most part. Honestly, if it weren't for pre-taking over this year, who knows how they finish up their chapter. There just wasn't that much urgency into putting out a winning product over there, and as a result, I'd say that most Boston fans have generally felt unsatisfied in the years of supporting their team. The good years were fun, but they only came around once in a blue moon, they didn't really get to that point where you would consider them to be a true title contender, and they never even sniffed a trophy. So I'd say that it's safe to say their venture in the league was widely unimpressive. Number 15, the Chengdu Hunters. 
So, Chengdu are a pretty weird team to get a grasp on. They pretty much accomplished nothing in their lifetime, they only had one real good season, and they left the league a year early on top of it all. But at the same time, I feel like compared to some of these other franchises that I ranked lower, they've mostly stayed out of trouble, they haven't been all that dramatic, and they've generally just been fun to watch. I don't think a lot of Chengdu fans care about what they did and didn't accomplish because they were always such a joy regardless of their status. Regardless of how good or bad they were, the chaos and that entertainment value was a mainstay. They've always been that silly ball fara team, and it feels like every year they had their moments. Even if it came in flashes, they usually found ways to remind us of their presence. They were one of the teams that was mutually respected and had a pretty decent reputation. But unfortunately, this can only take you so far, because winning means so much, and outside of 2021, they just didn't do that much of that. The 2021 tournament presence and leave winning MVP is great, but that's kind of where it ends. Honestly, they only really have like three legitimate years as a team that was trying to win. In 2022, they had hardcore budget issues and they even tried to sell leave but failed, and that basically derailed their season. And then this year, they literally disbanded. Chengdu were plagued by mediocrity for most of their lifetime, they weren't the most stable franchise out there, and they're one of the least accomplished teams in league history. Beloved as they are, their resume is absolutely bottom tier, and I'm not gonna hear otherwise. Next up, the Guangzhou Charge. Honestly, Guangzhou and the next few teams are somewhat interchangeable, kind of just a lot of meh years with like a couple of strong points here and there. It's like one tier above bottom of the barrel, you know? Just barely. In my opinion, the Charge might be the most forgettable franchise. Maybe it's just me, but they've always been kind of, I don't know, boring usually being overshadowed by other teams in Asia. To give credit where it's due to them, they did have a pretty impressive run in 2020 as one of the better teams in the league, and that Summer Showdown title over the Dragons deserves mad props. Honestly, their first two years were pretty decent, but sadly, that's all they can really brag about. The Charge made the playoffs just one time in five seasons, they only have like one good tournament run, and they pretty much put up three dud seasons in a row here in recent memory, where they just keep changing their roster mid-season to no avail. The mismanagement though, funny enough, is maybe only like half the issue. A lot of it also comes from just failing during the important moments. Aside from the Summer Showdown, they've basically lost every big game in their lifetime. They've choked away numerous opportunities to make the playoffs in big time tournaments over the years, therefore making them this boring team that's just never worth anyone's time. The charge were pretty exciting every once in a while, but it just never lasted. There was drama here and there, they couldn't win a lot of games, and the success was just lightning in a bottle. And when you look at the big picture, that's only gonna get you so far. And at the 14th slot, I can't believe I'm saying this, I have the Vancouver Titans. I badly want to put them lower. You don't even understand. The Titans have generally been so miserable. They've had one good season ever. One season where they did anything to be relevant. But 2019 was so wildly successful that people literally talk about them to this day. It's one of the single best seasons in league history. To have one of the best regular season records ever, to win stage one, to almost win stage two, and be grand finals runner-ups in one season is more than most teams have accomplished in their lifetime, let alone one year. But as I've been saying throughout this video, one good season can only take you so far. The best they've managed since that first year is a 500 record and no playoffs here in the present. And in between, their only good years was a nightmare. The mismanagement of Runaway at the start of 2020 might be the worst midseason implosion I've seen in the history of sports. And outside of that, they have one of the worst seasons in league history, followed by another bottom tier one in 2022. The Titans pretty much gave up on the league for a good three years. As great as 2019 was, as a whole, they're a poor org, both from a management and success perspective. Anyway, at the 12 spot, I'm going with the Houston Outlaws. Maybe this is a little surprising considering what they've accomplished the last two years, 
But longevity and success are also pretty important, especially when you don't actually win anything in your good years, and the Outlaws happen to not have either of those things. The only true success by this franchise comes in this new Overwatch 2 era. Nothing really came from Overwatch 1, which need not I remind you, was a majority of the league's existence. Let's break it down because it's important. So, in six seasons, they've been to the playoffs exactly three times, one of which they lost to the worst team in the league in the first round, so we're mostly going to focus on 2022 and 2023. And I give them some credit there. Those two years were really, really good. Good records in the regular season, a third place in the 2022 playoffs, and then runner-ups in the 2023 playoffs and in the midseason madness. In the past two years, they've pulled off some big-time upsets, and they've managed to win five playoff games while being one of the best teams in the league. Pretty good stuff there for sure. But we can't forget about their first four years. I'll give them some credit. I think that 2018 and 2021 weren't horrible, and they actually managed to have winning records in both years. But the thing is, from 2018 to 2021, they won exactly zero tournament and playoff matches. They could never get it done against the top teams and almost always crumbled under the pressure. And don't even get me started on 2019 and 2020. Absolutely miserable stuff. And in general, they were poorly ran for like half their existence. There was such a large refusal to adapt to the times with Korean talent. And management was overall really, really bad. And the fact of the matter is, even with the last two years, they're still at a below 500 winning percentage in the regular season with exactly zero first places to their names. Houston deserve a lot of credit for what they've done the past few seasons. I think it has heavily increased their stock, and in general, I think they have been a pretty stable org. But when you look at everything as a whole, there's been more downs than ups, and I just don't think that's something we can ignore. They're respectable, but I just can't consider them any better than 12th. Now, just missing out on the top 10, up next is the Dynasty. The Soul Dynasty didn't quite live up to their names. They had perhaps the most pressure of any team to live up to expectations, as for a long time, they and they alone were representing Korea. They were expected to deliver with championships and elite gameplay for years but they only managed to make the playoffs three times and accumulated all but one of their playoff wins in a single season. In a lot of years, the Dynasty were filled with inconsistent results or failing to deliver when it actually mattered, and that comes in spite of fielding some Hall of Fame level rosters. Just knowing what they were supposed to be, I find this pretty disappointing. However, I can't deny that Seoul were still one of the more dependable teams. Despite the lack of playoff success and championships, the Dynasty were a solid regular season team. They had only one losing season in six years, and while I would have liked to see them do more for namesake reasons, they still did win a 2022 kickoff clash title and made the 2020 Grand Finals in one of the most improbable playoff runs of all time. But outside of that, that's really all they have, which just isn't that much to write home about. And if I'm being honest with you, if it weren't for their consistency and their orc being pretty good every single year, they'd probably be even lower than the outlaws. But nonetheless, that's where I'm placing them, so we'll move on to number 10 where I'm going with the spark. It may seem a little weird to put the spark up this high, just knowing that they really haven't won anything, but I'm not gonna lie, their playoff success goes crazy. To play well whenever it mattered like that is such a great quality to have. The other stuff is cool, yeah, but everybody wants to see their team play well in the big games, and that's obviously when the league is the most exciting, that's the kind of stuff that you remember the most, and the Spark always managed to deliver, and were such a great entertainment source for the league in postseason and tournament play. To get top 4 twice, and then top 3 this year in the postseason is unreal. Clutch factor and being a relevant team when it matters is super important, and the Spark had that down to a T. They did an excellent job of putting Chinese Overwatch on the map. The Spark had their ups and downs, yes, but at the end of the day, they're going to have that long-lasting impact on the league, and that's what you're going to remember. When you look back, you'll be able to recall the crazy Winston plays by Gushui, the Sojourn pop-offs by Shy, or Leave going crazy on Tracer. 
Or how about the fact that the Spark lived up to the hype this year and back in 2019, or how they pulled off some of the most improbable upsets in tournament and playoff history, or how they somehow always managed to push top teams to their limits when it was super important. That was the Spark in a nutshell. They stepped up when it mattered. They played well in the big games. You don't forget about these things because this is when the league is the most important. This is when competition is at its biggest. That's what gives them the edge over a dynasty or an outlaws, let's say. They just have so much more playoff success and that ability to actually deliver for their fans. However, you still do have to tack off some points as even though they were very entertaining, they still did never come in first. And it's not like they didn't have their fair share of inconsistency. The regular season at times was quite painful, even this year, I'd like to argue. They had a couple of dud seasons where they missed the playoffs completely as well, and in some other seasons, they just had some brutal ups and downs before going to the playoffs. I mean, even in 2022, where they somehow got top four in the postseason, they were below 500 going into that tournament. The Spark had questionable moments and times that definitely warranted little respect, but more often than not, they were a pretty good team. Number 9, the NYXL. This one could get people a little heated as this may seem a bit too high for them, but hear me out. I think since they had three good years and three lackluster ones, that being around middle of the pack is fairly reasonable. They've been pretty balanced. The last three years, I won't even lie, have been an absolute embarrassment. Between bad rosters and questionable management, They've let a lot of teams jump ahead of them in this all-time ranking department. They've done a lot of wrong things. The incompetence that they've shown makes a lot of people, including myself, believe that they got extremely lucky to have the team they did back at the start. However, we can't just sit here and forget about everything that happened pre-2021. The NYXL for a long time were one of the most respected orgs in the league. It was a great start. In fact, to this day, they still have a top 5 total winning percentage in league history and are tied for top 6 in wins at 101. They had some of the greatest regular season records ever. Over 70 wins in 3 years is absurd. For a long time, they showed elite, disciplined gameplay with some of the most famous stars in the game. And while they never won that grand finals trophy they were seeking, I'd say that back-to-back -back stage titles in 2018, alongside a top 3 finish in the 2019 playoffs, and technically top 5 in 2020, is pretty good. I only wish that they did a bit more in the playoffs along the way, as 2019 was the only year they truly lived up to their potential in that regard, and as a result, I think they're kind of seen as one of the league's perennial chokers, which definitely drags down their stocks. It was super disappointing to see their original core break up without actually achieving their goal. Overall though, the constant winning ways back in the day definitely puts them ahead of a lot of other franchises who never experienced that level of gameplay before. It still has a lasting impact on the landscape of this league to this day, and despite making mistakes, New York only really had one terrible season ever, and I'd say that overall they've treated their players well while mostly staying out of drama. And considering that they've won more than most teams, I think that top 10 is fairly reasonable. Honestly though, this next take may get people even more fuming down in the comments, cause at number 8 I have the Soul Infernal. Meme on them all you want, but they're one of the most consistent, relevant franchises in Overwatch League history. They missed the playoffs only one time in 6 years, they've gone to the Grand Finals, they've won countless tournament games, and they've been a top team in their respective region like a good 3 times. Including tournament and playoff matches, they have won 116 games. They're rocking a win rate of over 60%, and they've had multiple contending squads in their lifetime. And as I've said before, you can laugh at them all you want for all the second places, but at least they've shown they have what it takes to get there consistently. But think about the number of teams who are lucky enough to even get there once. Soul Infernal have consistently stayed relevant, and they've damn near won a bunch of tournaments along the way. Management ran a very tight ship over there. They kept it clean for basically their entire existence, and they're easily one of the most consistent, respectable orgs in League history, even with the shortcomings. I need you to think about this for a second. The worst this team ever ever did in a season is 15 and 13. That is rock bottom. They've been around literally since the very beginning. That's really impressive. 
They don't have the peaks to be like a top tier team of course, but the fact that they always put out a decent product and they technically never had a losing season is more than enough to propel them over all these other teams that at some point in their lifetime had less than desirable results. Number 7. The Atlanta Reign the Reign, in my opinion, are the most successful expansion franchise. They haven't won more than, like, the Charger Titans, let's say, and they don't have as much playoff success as the Spark, but it's the consistency that gets them so high. One losing season in five years is pretty damn good, not to mention a dominant midseason Madness title and a Grand Finals runner-up. And they've made the playoffs every single season of their lifetime, something only they can say they've accomplished. And in that span, they've won at least one playoff game in four of those five years, plus a whole plethora of tournament runs. When combining 2021 and 2022, they got like four top three finishes in big tournaments, and they've just made a habit of pulling off some pretty nasty upsets against some stacked teams in these big moments, both in tourneys and in the playoffs. The Reign just always managed to stay relevant, and they're one of the only teams to mostly stay out of trouble, and they definitely have one of the better fan bases too in terms of loyalty and being spoiled with good results. Honestly, the only real flaw of Atlanta Reign, at least in my eyes, is seemingly letting everybody down at some of the worst possible moments. 2019 and 2023 were pretty big letdowns considering their expectations going into the postseason, and don't even get me started on their 2020 roster absolutely flopping in terms of expectations. The Reign overall, though, had some wonderful moments and some great consistency from a historical standpoint, but I still can't help but feel that they should have done more. Nonetheless, I do respect them. At my number 6 spot, I'm going with the Florida Mayhem, another one that may draw some debates. The Mayhem were pretty terrible in like 3 out of 6 years, but I personally put a lot of stock into them winning that championship. It took a really long time for them to figure it out, but they still are one of only 5 teams to win the Grand Finals. It's the most prestigious achievement you can get, and obviously that holds a lot of weight to it. But it's not like this is their only claim to fame, right? 2020, they were pretty good, and before this year even happened, they had won four playoff games. They got second place in the 2020 May Melee, third in 2021, third in this year's Midseason Madness, and I think when you add in the finals run on top of it, that gives them a pretty decent advantage. But realistically, they definitely can't go any higher than, like, fifth. Because outside of this year, they've had some of the biggest disasters in Overwatch League history. I mean, they won 13 games in 68 tries in their first two years combined. This team had some of the worst org problems we have ever seen. Coaches and players did not see eye to eye at times. Not to mention that management didn't respect or take care of their players. I mean, they had Tavik driving the goddamn team bus for crying out loud. This team had no plan and no direction. They lied to people and they just generally had no idea what the hell they were doing. They started off so badly, mind you, that they still have a below 500 regular season winning percentage to this day. God bless Albert taking over as GM for this team, because if it weren't for him, who knows what would have happened. Needless to say though, the Mayhem need to have a balance. They were an embarrassment for a long time, but they still did have the best possible peak a team can have. And I'd say at the very least, that is probably enough to earn them somewhere in the top half. It's up to you. Even if they had a lot of rough years, they did something that most teams were never able to accomplish, and that's gotta count for something. But now we can move into our top five, and oh, I'm stressed to talk about this one. Probably gonna get some more rage from this, but at five, I have the Gladiators. They are my highest ranked team to never win a Grand Finals. It may seem ridiculous to even put them above the Mayhem because of that fact and the whole Sadiators meme, but... I can't really argue with their consistency. I think that's what ultimately puts them ahead of a Mayhem team that has seen so much turmoil in their lifetime. The Gladiators missed the playoffs one time in six years. That ability to put out great products almost every year of the league with all the challenges and changes is something you can't underestimate. They've never been afraid to make the big moves. They've always taken the risks. And in a lot of cases, their team took notable leaps forward from them. You gotta hand it to them. They were ran pretty good up until the last year. They were generally a good orc. And I'd argue that most teams in the league had at least two poor seasons, while the Glads basically only had the one. This team just barely missed 
misses out on a 60% winning percentage all time, and they're tied for the second most first places in a tournament of all time at three. That is some elite company right there. The only thing is, because they didn't win a lot of playoff games, they're definitely a tier below those juggernaut franchises. They just don't have the type of postseason success that you're looking for with a truly elite team despite going every year. But hey, a lot of other franchises can barely even say they made the playoffs, let alone won a game. So I'd say the Glads did pretty alright for themselves. They fell short of their potential more than anyone would have liked, but they still did win more than a majority of the league did, and they were hardly ever a miserable team to watch. So for that, I tip my hat to a pretty good lifespan. And at the 4 spot, I'm going with the London Spitfire. And the reason I have them this high is because you just can't deny that London were pretty damn successful. It happened a long time ago, but they still did win a grand finals and a stage title on top of it. Now, admittedly, Season 1 definitely does some heavy lifting since there's no other trophies to be found, but generally, London mostly have kept it clean. 2020 and 2021 were pretty disastrous, but aside from that, they've held their own pretty much every season. It wasn't always coming in dominant fashion, but they made the playoffs four different times, and outside of 2019, they won games in each of them. A dominant first in the inaugural season, top six in 22, technically top five this year, and they've beaten some really good teams along the way. We're talking the Gladiators at their peak, the Valiant at their best, and of course an OP Atlanta Rain roster. The London Spitfire have always stepped up to the occasion to go on some very exciting playoff runs, and they've done it through multiple avenues. They acquired top talent in the first half, and they ended up developing it themselves with its own unique identity in the other. London have been a very stable org throughout, and there's generally not much to complain about. Those dud seasons definitely dragged down what they could have been, but overall, definitely one of the most successful franchises of all time. And starting off the top three now will be the Dallas Fuel. It's kind of funny to look back at Dallas. If we had this conversation three years ago, they'd be bottom tier without question, as during that time, they did nothing but disappoint the fans in that so-called cycle of misery by massively underperforming with their rosters each year and having lots of drama offstage. Honestly, it's a shame that those first three years went the way they did, because even if they go a little bit better, there's a chance they end up maybe even higher on this list. But luckily for them, I think most people would agree that the second half of their existence has more than made up for the pain that Dallas fans had to go through. Because when 2021 happened up until the present day, they turned into a completely different team. The last three years alone basically put them in a class above a vast majority of this league. It's one of the Overwatch League's best stories, and that gives them some major brownie points. Two-time tournament champs, a third-place finish in 2021 in the postseason, a grand finals championship in 2022 from one of the most exciting finals ever, completing the Fearless Redemption arc, and just having a Hall of Fame roster. All of that stuff adds up to make a pretty significant contribution to the league. I mean, just what they did in 21 and 22 alone is so much better than what, like 90% of the league? League, Dallas have become one of the winningest teams in league history. They've consistently made and won both playoff and tournament games in recent memory. It did take them a while, but they cleaned up their act big time. Just given how loyal their fan base is, and how stable the org has generally been throughout the whole process while developing such a great story, I'd say that it all more than makes up for the rough patches to make them one of the most accomplished teams in Overwatch League history. Moving on to the number two spot, our runner-up, it's the Shanghai Dragons, who are absolutely a lock for the top two. It goes without saying that they had one of the most exciting stretches the league has ever known. From 2019 until right before the 2022 playoffs, they were excellent. The 0-40 season, as well as this year, definitely hurts what they could have been, and it's something you have to acknowledge, but nobody in the league has ever been perfect. Regardless of if Shanghai had one of the worst seasons ever, I'd say that their achievements afterwards more than makes up for it. It's unreal to think that this franchise has won at least one tournament in four consecutive seasons. It translates to six tournament golds, which is the most ever by far, plus they have a grand finals trophy where they maybe had the best team of all time. 
Trading one terrible year plus a not so good one for those results is the easiest deal of your life and if anything those bad seasons become an afterthought in a distant memory just because of how much they were able to do compared to most of the league. If anything, the rough beginning built character and developed the narrative that we know today. And unlike a lot of other teams, they found a way to break through. They weren't stuck. They didn't let it get them down. It goes to show that with the right mindset and the right people in charge, that you can literally go from the very bottom to kings of the world. That is a top level org. Most people like the dragons and everybody respects how far they've come as a team. And had they won a second chip, I would have no problem giving them number one without question. But nonetheless, the dragons are definitely top tier, and they're one of only the few dynasties to ever exist in League history. And finally, to the surprise of no one, taking home the number one spot as the best franchise in Overwatch League history is the San Francisco Shock. What is there to say about these guys that hasn't already been said? I mean, just the fact that they've won two Grand Finals trophies alone puts them above everybody else. And that's only just the beginning, right? I mean, they've had four respectable years out of six, which is pretty nice, and they've gone to the Grand Finals in literally half the seasons that this league has even existed, while mind you, nobody else has even gone to two. Also, they have three tournament golds, which, like I said before, is tied for second most all time. They've got the highest win percentage of all time by far, winning around two-thirds of their matches. Not to mention numerous Hall of Famers, success through various eras, and a team that has maintained relevance for longer in the league than anybody else has. I mean, the fact that they were at or close to the top in three out of six seasons is just not even fair. And they may not have won anything maybe the last couple of seasons, but their winning culture and stable org is just too difficult to match. And as the sixth in the final year fades away, they are without a shadow of a doubt the most successful team in Overwatch League history. And that's going to do it for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think of this list down in the comments below and what you'd change as well. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more all-time Overwatch League content in the future, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'd appreciate it greatly. And until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.